Good morning and welcome to worship this uh, Sunday morning, March the 28th, 2021. This is our uh, Palm Passion Sunday service. Uh, as you can see, I'm here in the church building uh, alone, but I know that you folks are tuning in. We're all joined as one together in worship today as we prepare ourselves to um, enter into Holy Week. Um, we look forward to also joining together um, in the, uh, on Good Friday with uh, the United Church in town to have a, a collaborative service there with the folks um, at, at the United Church. So stay tuned for that. That will be happening at the normal time on Good Friday at uh, 10 a.m. So let's uh, begin with a call to worship. Come bow down and worship. Kneel to the Lord, our Maker. This is our God, our shepherd. We are the flock led with care. Let us join in song as we sing number, hymn number 214, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. O gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you, ears to listen for your word, a heart to love you, and a life to proclaim you. Merciful God, you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you, so we humbly confess our sins and ask for your mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, in your loving kindness. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Do not cast us away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore 
to us the joy of our salvation and sustain us with your bountiful spirit through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As far as the east is from the west, so far God has removed our sins from us. Know that we are forgiven in Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. We now present our offering to God. Let us pray. Dear God, take these tokens of our gratitude to you for your goodness toward us and bless them, Lord. Lord, help us to be your stewards in our world and in this uh, difficult time, make us your vessels, vessels of your peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our first scripture today is from the Gospel of John, 
chapter 19 and the first, uh, the 30th verse, just one verse. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And the second reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 44. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun had stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospels of Matthew and Mark record that as Jesus is breathing his last breaths, he cried out in a loud voice, but they didn't tell us what he said. We have to go to John's Gospel to tell us what Jesus said then. He said, it is finished. Well, what exactly do these words, it is finished, mean? At first, it seems like Jesus was saying, it's over. I'm done. This is the end of me. Like he's giving up, that he's lost. It was a cry of defeat. After what he had experienced in those torturous hours, it wouldn't be a surprise for us to find out that Jesus said something like this. It would make sense that he was desperately surrendering to the fate that awaited him. It certainly could be read that way. After all, it took most victims a lot longer to die on crosses. Comparably, Jesus suffered quite quickly and died. Perhaps these words show that he finally surrendered and gave in, that he finally threw in the towel and called it quits. Is that, is that what's happening here to Jesus on the cross? Of course, that is not what the Greek word for it is finished means. Finished here is more about completion. Jesus was announcing that he had done what he came into the world to accomplish. He had just achieved something great. He had fought the good fight. He had finished the race. Jesus warned his disciples time and time again that he was going to be handed over to the authorities and he was going to Jerusalem to die. His arrest, his torture and crucifixions were no surprise to him. He had come to Jerusalem for this very purpose. And now it was complete. This was not a cry of defeat. It wasn't all, actually, at all a cry. Actually, he shouted one word in Aramaic, finished, completed. The preacher William Williman has said that Jesus' words are similar, or something similar to what Michelangelo might have said while looking up at the Sistine Chapel after he had completed the last brushstroke it is finished. But what exactly was completed on the cross? The Gospel of Luke tells us that something happened in the temple just before Jesus breathed his last breath. The curtain in the temple was torn in two. Now the fact that three out of the four Gospels record this detail means that we should take note. The temple was a 10-minute walk from where Jesus was crucified. Well, within the temple, there is a place called the inner court, which was where the priest would ascend up the stairs to the holy place, where they would offer incense on the altar of incense. Further in was the holy of holies, which was considered to be the throne room of God. Only the high priest was allowed to enter, and he could only do so once a year. Once a year, that high priest would enter the Holy of Holies to atone for his own sin and the sin of the people. 
There was a curtain that would separated the holy place from the holy of holies. And that curtain was one piece of a very thick and heavy fabric. The Gospels tells us that when Jesus died, this thick curtain separating the holy place from the holy of holies was torn in two. That was no small undertaking. That required a violent tearing. Why do the Gospels record this incident? Well, the torn curtain is a metaphor to what the death of Jesus accomplished on the cross. It was a sign that in his death, Jesus entered the temple into the Holy of Holies as our great high priest and offered his own life as one final sacrifice to bring humanity to God. The curtain was torn in two is a powerful image that shows us that there is now no need for a curtain. Through Jesus, human beings can come directly to God's mercy seat, to the cross to ask for God's mercy and for God's grace. It is finished. Jesus' work is done. In the beginning of the book of John, John the Baptist says of Jesus, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Now it's one thing to hear those words, that here, in this act, Jesus takes away the sin of the world, that indeed it is finished. But it's quite another to believe that in your heart. I suspect that there might be no more difficult thing for us as Christians to believe than this. That it has been accomplished. That means there is no more striving. There is no more work left to be done. When it comes to getting our lives right with God, it is finished. Jesus has done this work on the cross. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The author Fleming Rutledge says this, It is in the nature of human beings to think that Christ, that Christ's work could not possibly be finished. That we have to do more. That we have to add to it. That we have to earn it. Well, a few days from now, we will see Jesus do for us that which we could never do for ourselves. It is there where we learn that following God is not so much about us doing something for God, but a matter of us having something done for us by God. When we look at the cross, we see the blood, we see the defeat and the death, but something grand is happening in spite of us. There is no need for us to try and busy ourselves getting right with God. We are simply to sit and wait and watch Jesus do as he dies. It is finished. There's a story in the book by C.S. Lewis, The Great Divorce, in which a bishop dies and finds himself getting off a bus in some unknown place. Welcome to heaven, someone says to him. The bishop promptly presents himself to the person who seems to be in charge. Where will we be gathering for the meeting, he asked. There is no meeting, he is told. Oh, there must be a meeting. There is work to be done, good to be accomplished, problems to address, We are responsible people who have responsibilities. Where is the meeting, he asked. No meeting, no work to be done. No responsibilities to be met. It's done, over, finished. God has done it all for us. The story ends with the bishop boarding a bus bound for hell eager to get there and get busy. Heaven is a place 
of blessed rest, and hell is the place where the work is never done. William Willimon says, Listen to this, O ye purpose-driven, goal-setting, high achievers. He has done what we could not do. Because we could not get up to God, God climbed down to us and got down to our level. It is finished. What is to be done by us? Nothing. What can we ever do for God? Nothing. It is finished. On this last Sunday of Lent Palm and Passion Sunday, we have looked at one of these last words from Jesus on the cross, and we have contemplated how much that means to each one of us to know that there is no work left to be done. May we meditate on those words as we move into Holy Week so we can comprehend the fullness of Christ's sacrifice for us on the cross. It is finished. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord gracious God, we, on this most holy day, God, in Palm Sunday, we try to fathom the greatness of your love and your mercy toward us. That you would come, Lord, and willingly suffer for our sake and bear the load, the burden of our suffering and our sin upon yourself. Oh, Lord, help us to know that in that experience you have allowed us to understand that whatever we go through in life, whatever challenge we face in these days, you have gone before us and you will walk alongside of us in those times of trial and temptation. Lord, as a congregation, we also offer up our needs to you from our family and friends, those who may be in hospital, those who are recovering from surgery, those who are experiencing the loss of a loved one. Those who are finding this such an isolated time and are searching for some hope. We pray that you would be with each one and that you would meet each need according to your riches and glory. We ask all these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us join and respond to God as we sing our hymn number 11, The Lord is My Shepherd.
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.